Hey, hey, everybody. This is Wednesday, April 27th. We only get one, so let's make it the best one ever. My name's Dave Schrein, and uh, I am not with Steve Edwards. Steve is hunting, but we have a very, very special show for you today, something we've never done before. If you recall, we have done the show live for the last several years. However, when we looked at the remainder of April and May and June, it became apparent that it was going to be really difficult to show up at the same place every single week at the same time. So Steve and I made the decision that we were going to do some pre-produced shows. The last two episodes have been great. We've gotten to do some things that we've never done before, and today is no exception. What we're going to do is we're going to dig deep back into the archives, and we are going to take a look at one of Steve's clinics with some never-before-seen footage from April... March 2021. It was a great clinic. We have a bunch of footage that we have not released, a few pieces that we have released. So if you've seen bits and pieces of this, great. You're getting to see the whole thing now. It's going to be a fantastic, uh, it's, I think it's almost about an hour uh, total, but I urge you to watch the whole thing. One of the things that happens in a lot of these YouTube videos is we'll get folks commenting on just a very small portion of a clip and they'll say what's he doing that for why is that happening well if you got to see the whole clip you'd understand everything and that's what we're going to present for you today here's what we need from you though if you are here watching live thank you if you are watching in the future hello from the past please uh let yourself be known uh myself and steve we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at all of the people who have chimed in on this episode of the ask steve program and i would love for you to be a part of that please in the comment section put your name where you're watching from and what the weather is like today we would love to see you hear you know you uh and uh say hello to you when we go back and we watch uh all of the people who tuned in when this video premiered uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. We will get to those in a future episode. We want to make sure that you get the answers you need so you can get the results that you want when you get out there and train. So, your name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like, ask any and every mule or donkey question that you've got, and finally, please share the broadcast, please leave a comment, and please click that like button on YouTube, please click, click that like button on Facebook and please share this out. That's the best way that you can help us. That's the best way that you can help other mule and donkey owners. The people that we've been able to connect with, it's 100% because of you. It's 100% of you guys telling your friends, you guys helping us with all of the social media algorithms and helping us get the word out there. Okay, without any further delay, let's go ahead, get into the opening session of Steve's clinic back in March of 2021. We've got some never before seen footage that we're gonna be debuting right here. And in the coming weeks, we'll be batching the release of portions of this video, but you get to see the whole thing today. Thanks so much for being here. Name, where you're watching from, what the weather's like, any and every mule and donkey question you got in the comment section and share it out. Enjoy. Okay, now right now, Miss, Miss Mule, says, uh, I don't understand you. There's the licking of the lips and dropping of the head. All I did was just make a little bit tough because she was not paying attention to me. When I come in the corral, I'm the boss. It's like when my wife comes in the house, she's the boss. So, so now notice I approach the shoulder. I didn't allow the mule to come to me. I went to the mule. Always do that. The mule is never allowed to be in my space. I am allowed to come into his space. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. All right. So once we do that, I approached the shoulder and I pet it on the shoulder. Now, when we're looking for mules to buy, you all are trail riders, unless you're competing with gym cannas and stuff. If you're looking for a mule to buy, look for this confirmation. Do you see top of the hip, top of the wither, top of the head? Even when the mule's head elevates a little bit, it's still balanced and framed up. What that does is the mule will naturally drive off his hip, will naturally elevate his head down, lower his head down, and round out his back. 
when he rounds out his back from us sitting on him, the back is usually like this. The, the backbone's all together like this. When we sit on their back, that changes now and goes that like this. Especially if the head, hey. All these people over here, surely one of them will pet me. There we go. Now, you see how her head is right now? Yeah. I want that head to make her neck sore. And I want her to take and start to go away from me uh, like that. Now I got the right brain looking at me. Now I got the lick slip, lips licking. You see that? Now she's saying, come over for a visit. Right brain, look at the right, right ear. Look at the licking of the lips. Before it was, what the heck are you doing? But when I see the licking of the lips, and I see the, the right brain kind of going on to me, I'll approach. Do I want to approach? Yes, I told you all before. I want to go to them. I don't mind them turning and stopping like she did earlier, but that was good. So now I got the right brain. She licked her lips earlier. So I'll come on over here. There's a little bit of lick toward me, good. And that's a good to me. Come on over, invitation's on to come and visit. Invitation's over. There we go, invitation's on. You see that little look? Come on up and give him a scratch. Little look, little ear. But you need to see submission that they're saying, okay, you're the boss here. Dropping the head, licking the lips. The other looked pretty good when she turned and looked at me. That was nice. But now, if she says, I don't know that I really want to spend any time with you, you know? Plus that, I am on the right brain. Here's the downside of the majority of animals is the right brain doesn't get enough work, doesn't get enough time over here. So we need to spend some time on this right brain to get them to say, oh, okay, I'll come on over and visit or I'll do what you want them to do. Now notice, head down, ears are relaxed. When they drop their head and lick their lips, that is submission, okay? All of us husbands know that one, right? Okay, <laughs> get a look. When I'm approaching the mule, I don't look down and look back up. If I look down and look back up, I just said to that mule, I, I am subservient to you. Heads down, I'm, that's, what I, that's the way I look, okay? So, when I approach, I stay square-shouldered. Notice how I've got my bridle over here and I stay quiet. Good. I'll go ahead and approach the shoulder. Visit now is her own. I stay square-shouldered, I don't mind her sniffing me. I'll come on up and I'll get a scratch. And I'll go ahead and step back a minute. I like to see the head lowered, eyes getting nice, big and brown, licking of the lips. See how I brought her back to me. If I would have still been approaching her while I was good, while she had her head turned, I was telling her to go away. You got the picture? But as long as she's saying she's over here, she says, okay, I understand you want me to stay right here while you approach. So I'll come on over. I'll change a little bit, bring her back over to me, come back on over and get a scratch. Are you doing it this way because she doesn't know you? Would you do it this way every time? Is this just the basis of ground foundation training? Okay, I'm doing this for the main reason is she doesn't recognize me as the herd leader right now. So when she turns away, she, uh, I, don't, I don't know you're here. Okay, I don't recognize you. But when she's looking at me, she's got the left brain, okay, what do you want me to do? That's exactly what's happening. If they look away from you, folks, they, 
they put you're not in their world anymore. But if they look towards you and they got that left eye looking at you, then, then you're the one that's doing the leading. You're the one that's dictating which, which way to go. And it starts right here, this little bit right here. As many mules as I've had, it's hard to catch in this sort of thing. It can be the gentlest mules as this one here. The slightest little mistake that I do here by approaching when she's looking the other way can be a way of saying, go away from me. That's exactly what I've done. They're looking that way and I'm, and I'm approaching. So they're saying, okay, you're the boss. I must have to go this way. You got the picture? So I can teach them to come to me, go away from me and stop. So now once we do this, her head's down. And I'll come on over and give a little scratch in here. And then I'll come around here and put my hand on the right hand side. And then I'll rub on the eyes a little bit over here. And then I take, and I want her head to stay right here. And I want her head to lower, good. Like that. That is how I want to accept the bridle. I don't want them to have their head in the air and their nose away from me. So all I do is just kind of put my hand here. and just relax. Right hand goes right to here, left hand goes here, and just relax and just be there. Good for you, all right? Now I'll take my bridle. Psst. If you leave me, you're gonna be uncomfortable. Left ear's on me, left eye, look at that. So the left brain's thinking about me. Invitation's still on. But if you leave me, but then people want to pet me. I'm just sure they want to pet me. If you leave me, I'm going to make it uncomfortable. Do you see what I tried to do? If the, your mule doesn't like to be touched, would you still approach her or him and rub at him? Yes. Okay. Now, there's a lot of mules, folks, that, that are, they were old type of mules that we used to have. And uh, shoot, they, um, they, they just wanted to go to work. They didn't want to be pets. And so, yeah, I'd still pet them. Uh, I can tell you what I found recently is that some of these mules that don't want to be petted and stuff actually have some type of uh, allergy deal. I forget what it is that the veterinarians tell me about, but there was something about their coat and stuff. If their coat was rough, they're usually the harder ones to brush and, and deal with. But I think I always thought a lot of it was just the old type of mule. Okay. Shoot, mine's rough coated. Yeah, is she? Can I get her tested? Yes, I would. Okay. Yeah. And there's stocks for that. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yes, there is. Yes, ma'am. And if yeah. you made a difference on your mule, we'll we'll know. She's about uh, six months in. Okay. So I've got I've got uh, three more months of shots. Okay. Okay. Now when I put the bridle on, I want the mule to keep his head down, and I'm going to take this finger right here. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to rub the bars of the mouth. And I'm going to rub the bars. This finger is inside the bars right now rubbing. Feeling good. I want, the, oh, the mule says, oh, that really feels good, Steve. Some more. Rubbing, 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 rubbing. It's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Easy now. Right ear first, left ear second. Okay. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Why the right ear, not the left one first? Good question. I'm good for you. Why didn't the rest of you think of that? Okay. What I don't want to do as a trainer, I don't want to make one thing correct and create five or six other things. Like I was talking to you earlier about the, the lady with the, the donkey. She did a bunch of good things. Thank you. She did a bunch of good things, but the one bad thing that she did that kind of <laughs> that kind of messed up everything else was she had the saddle sitting on top of the scapula. So when I put a bridle on, if I put the bridle on the left ear first, I got a chance of pushing her head away from me. But if I do the right side, I got a chance of bringing her head to me. You got that? So when I put a bridle on, I want her head down. I want her quiet when I put the bridle on. Now my mom was four foot six. So all my apprentices in this sort of thing, I always taught them. I said, take and teach your mule to drop the head so that when you drop the head, they'll pick up the bridle. Now, what happened there? 
I've got two places back in here at the nerves that when I touch those two places in the nerves, they ought, that makes them uncomfortable. What do they want to do? They want to get away from you. When they've been braced a lot, where they've had their teeth bumped, they've been pulled down a lot, they will tighten all five major neck muscles. Now get your neck muscles in your mind. The one across the crest of the neck, one that runs along the center of the, of the neck, and one that runs along the esophagus, and the two in the throat. Now, I want you to see this. This bit is hanging all the way down, bumping the front teeth. Can everybody kind of see that? It's all hanging all the way down, bumping the front teeth. That's how low that bit is. Good for you. Yeah. She'd gotten quiet for a little bit there, but then I put a little stress on her. You gotta remember, this is the mule that had $4,000 worth of work and $2,000 worth of tooth, teeth done. Now she just picked up the bit and she's packing it. Now she says, I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna kind of move it around until I can get quiet, until I can figure out where's the most comfortable. While she's doing that, this throat latch is very important, folks. When you put a throat latch on, always make sure it's loose. If it's too tight of a throat latch, they will tend to be stiff and they will tend to not bend, break at the pole because the throat latch is pestering them. So I always like to have a good, good long thro throat latch and not very tight. There she goes packing the bit again, picking it up and holding it. Now this is something we're not going to do overnight. This is something I'm going to let her pack this bit back about three times and then I'm going to quit her. I'm done. But on top of that, you've got to remember, she's had all the, the, the dental problems, okay? Now, let's just kind of fast forward just a little bit. And let's say she gets quiet here. Wait for just a second. Oh, let's, let's go do this here. There, she gets quiet again. That's number two. After number three, I would pull the bridle off, and then I would uh, come back in four or five days or the next day. You don't have to train every day. And then I would put it back in there again. Okay, during, the question is, during the time when I'm packing the bit, am I not riding in that time? No. Okay, now here's the deal. I want you to take your brakes on your truck, and I want you to loosen them all up so you've got no brakes at all, and then I just want you to go drive. It's the same thing. Because you see, here it is. If the mule is not comfortable with the bit, and if the mule is not responding to the bit, why go out there and have a helicopter ride to the, hel to the hospital? Why? The riding, folks, is not the important part. It's getting there safely is what the important part is. Unfortunately, when you go to buy a meal, what do you do? You see, everybody's moving. I watch guys ride up and down the road as if that was a big deal. You know? No, in a 10-foot circle. In a 10-foot circle. I want to see them turn on the forehand. In a 10-foot circle. I want to see them side pass. Whoop. Are we here? Come on, babe. Right there. Good for you. Let's try it. I want to see you side pass. Good girl. Like that. In a 10-foot circle. I want to see them turn on the hindquarters. So we'll step back and go. Whoop. Let's do it again. Step back and go. Good. They naturally already do it. We just got to have the cue to do it. Now, if I use my hands, then right here, that front end stays in place and the back end comes over. All I'm doing is touching right here. Now, eventually, the front end completely stays in place and the back end goes around. That's my ultimate goal. But for now, if I can just get her to do that, good. Okay, now she's packing the bit again. Okay? So, we'll take... And step over here. When you buy a mule, you buy disposition first. Confirmation second. Training third. Color, who cares? Okay? Because the color doesn't make the mule. Makes some of you girls cuter, I guess. Us guys uglier. Okay? All right, so now look. I have my bridle on my mule. And I want to teach a backup. Notice. 
What do you mean no? Watch this. Watch this. I hold my left hand solid and I bump my right rein. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, bump, bump. I'm going to watch the head drop and the nose come on the vertical. Almost. Almost there. I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to pick up on it again. And she's thinking I drop my head and get my nose on the vertical like that. Are you going to let go of me? No, I'm not going to let go of you. I want that right shoulder to move. Oh, left one will do because your right one is already ahead. That's okay. If, if, the, if, the right, if the left shoulder is ahead, then it's going to back up. The main thing is, what did I want? I wanted feet to move. So what was I just doing? Teaching my right brain to back up. That's what I was doing. So I was holding my, my right brain solid, and I hold my, 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 right, my left brain holding solid, and my right brain, I'm bumping it. A little bit more. Oh, that's okay. Tongue's fine. You'll get over it. Okay, now do you see that? Do you see how much I pulled? Mm -hmm. Barely picked up on the bridle. That's what you want to see. She gapped her mouth. Yeah, I mean, she's had the surgery and she's had other bit problems and this sort of thing. Good. I'm done with her today. I actually went a little bit more than I'd like to have had, but I want to see her pick up the bit and pack it. But I just wanted you all to see how light it can be and how quickly you can get response. Steve, yes, ma'am. When you had said earlier that you let them pack the bit uh -huh. a few times and then you adjust the head stall, I, okay, why let's go. did you not do that with her? Okay, let's go on. I adjust the head stall for the finished bit. Oh, okay. This is the snaffle bit. This is for the next six months. This mule is going to have that bit hanging down, bumping the incisors. I'm not moving it. As we progress, the mule, notice he's already framed up his head, but notice even with the pressure of the bit, this little bit, the mule's even dropped his head a little bit more. And the nose has gone on the vertical and she's picking up the bit and packing it, right? So for the next six months, every time I put this bridle on, actually for the rest of his life, as far as I'm concerned, every time I put the bridle on, I put it loose, let him pack the bit. It keeps him soft, it keeps him fluid, you know, they're very willing. Now, when I put on my finished bit, She's got a short mouth. So a short mouth is actually going to be, I find, a faster to learn reining mule. They're, 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 because I don't have to deal with the molars back here. They're a little farther back and I don't have to worry about bumping them or the upper, upper molars as well, okay? And of course she's had her, her wolf teeth pulled. So this type of a mule here uh, is, there she dropped her head even more, gets nose on the vertical, but she's already balanced and framed up so training her to get to, to go into this stuff is going to be a piece of cake. You don't have to be a trainer to train this kind of a mule. You know, the frame, the mind's already there, but the frame is there. You know, I can tell you that in my past, I've learned that buckskins with zebra stripes are the most wanted color there is, but they're the hardest ones to train. It can be extremely hard-headed until they get to seven years old. And then all of a sudden, it's like the light kind of comes on. Okay, you see the mule packing the bit? Yes, yes, sir. Steve, if you've got on a sir single or a saddle and you want to adjust that strap. Yes, sir. How? Okay, all right. So. How tight, I mean. Okay, so here, here's the deal. When it comes down to, right now I'm riding strictly off of, <laughs> you're a good one. I'm riding strictly off of the rain itself. When I ride off of the martingale and this string, Look how light. So I want to see, I want to see, <laughs> I want to see a little bit of loop right here like this. Okay. What I don't want is to have my reins so tight that the mule is bracing against it. Remember, I don't want to, I don't want to have one thing be good and four things be bad. So these reins are going to be loose, just like you see here. The martingale is going to be hooked up in between the legs, just like here. Okay. Now, am I going to demonstrate that? Yes. Yes, I want you all to see it. This is the greatest training thing in the world. When you see the video that goes with this, you will see a trained mule that is a great mule. I, I trained her. And she's just nice mind and everything, but she got the folks started pulling on her and this sort of thing and got her, got her grumpy. 
You see her in the, in the pictures, in the video, the mule's going around throwing his head, gapping his mouth, trying its best to get away from it. And within about the third time around, that mule started dropping his head, getting his nose on the vertical and went off smooth and easy. Nobody on his back. If the bit is right, folks, you don't have to be on them to get results, as you just saw me do. And I just did just a teeny bit, you know. And a mule like this, a mine like this here, you know, paying $16,000, I seen a mule like this go better from was 32,000 at a sale called the Chrome sale. You know, so nice mines are worth it. And if you got a lot of money, why not, right? Any questions? That makes sense to you? So you're, can you show the difference between making the bit work and letting the bit work? Well, here? yeah, making the bit work, as I showed you all, was where I pulled you. Letting it work is where I just turned my hands, like you just saw me do, just bumping. See, the bit is there, okay? Now, as you can see, as, as she progresses, she'll start getting her nose more on the vertical and head down. But when you're making the bit work, it's when you're pulling. You don't have to do that, for instance. I'm sorry about this, babe, but you're doing good. You, make, you know, I, I got to tell you guys my secret. This is a secret. I whispered in this mule's ear before I got over here. And I said, roses are red, violets are blue. Mules that make me turn, look bad would be turned to glue. <laughs> she don't want to be glue, does she? All right. Remember what I was telling you? Now, we're going to see other riders do this, but I'm going to just do this. Direction, impulsion. Back to center. Direction, impulsion. Back to center. Direction, impulsion. Wait. Wait. This hand's past where it should be. This hand should be about right here, but I'm not in the saddle. So far in it, babe. There we go. I wanted to, there. Y'all see it? If I waited, I set her up, let the bit work. Right there is an example of letting the bit work. Just seen the feet move. I kept my hands in the same place. If they were more correct, they'd be, be more like here instead of out here. Okay? But just to give you an idea, I waited. Now, if I was going to make the bit, make her move her feet, I'd just pull it. And I don't want to do that to her, you know? Uh, so, so I'd have pulled it and made her go. But instead, I let the bit work. Let, how did I do that? I just went here and here, and I waited. Dropped her head. I let go. Come back. Then she started moving her feet, right? Then it goes on from there. As soon as we get somebody else in the saddle, we'll do that too. Okay, so what do you think? Fun, huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so the, the tongue over the bit will resolve itself in time? The tongue over the bit will resolve itself. Here's the, here's the thing. When I have people tell me, the tongue's going over the bit. The bit is too high in the mouth. We don't create one wrinkle or two wrinkles. So in the past, what's happened? Somebody had it too high. So the mule says, to be comfortable, I'll gap my mouth and I'll get my tongue out. Okay, here's the thing. These mules aren't dumb. When they get their tongue over top of the bit, what's going to happen? The, the uh, bit is going to be rubbing on the bars of the mouth. What's going to happen then? It's going to start making them uncomfortable. They then will protect their bars because those bars are really sensitive. They'll stick their tongue back underneath there and they will pack the bit. Then they know. This right here is priceless. This right here is more important than riding. Getting the confidence of the mule that the mule trusts the bit and trusts you. Folks, you know, you're on the side of a mountain, you know. You want to have that mule 110% pay attention to you. You can't do enough of this, okay. Next thing I do when I do the surf single and stuff in here, you guys will get a chance to see that whole bit. Okay, does that make sense to you? Does everybody see that? Okay. So back to that question real quick. Uh, you know, if these are mules that you had for, been working for five years, and when you come in to approach them, uh, are you still going to approach the same way you did, did this mule? Every single mule. I approach the shoulder. I don't care how long I've had them. I don't care how short I've had them. You know, even my wife's mule are my only other personal mules, you know. I always approach the shoulder and never approach the head. Never. The head, the head talks too much. The head says, go away from me, come to me and stuff, like I was telling. The neutral zone that is natural to the mule. Now, you're always hearing about natural horsemanship, okay? 
it, it does exist, but unfortunately has gotten stretched in the wrong direction, okay? A lot of round pin chasing and stuff like this. Natural horsemanship is this. You go to their shoulder. Why do you do that? You see other animals go to the shoulder. What happens when two animals come together? Whee! I'm the biggest one. Whee! No, I'm the biggest one, right? You know? And then they paw and everything else. I've had a lot of people get hurt because they've got themselves pawed because they come up the front and went to touch the nose of a Mustang or whatever. I don't do that. No, I don't want to be aggressive. I want to be passive. And uh, I want to be aggressive when it comes down to uh, what they're going to do. Like when I come in this corral and then when I walk over toward the shoulder, but I, what I, and then there's where I'm going to be the passive. Otherwise I'm going to be without a doubt, I'm going to be the head in this corral. You know, it's when you're short, like I am, you need all the advantage you can get. Okay. Even as gentle as this mule is folks still approach the shoulder. My wife's mule we have for 28 years. I approach the shoulder. You know, when I have a problem on my own side of a mountain, she gets away or something happens. They know that the shoulders, the, the neutral zone. The nose says, come to me, go away from me and stop. That's what it does. You're a good so, meal. So it's less about the amount of time you took approaching them, and it's more about just waiting for them to acknowledge you as the herd leader and let you in? Yes. So you'll do it the same way every time, but in theory, it will take less time because it, they'll get used in, to it? Yeah, in theory, it'll take time. It'll, 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 you can just walk around right up to them, you know, exactly. And I want to always walk to my animal. I don't want them coming to me. They're not allowed to come into my space. I come into their space. I am the herd leader. You ever watch herds of animals, you will see the leader always come into their space. You'll always see it. When you see the wild horses and stuff that I've seen, the wild donkeys, same thing. The mule agrees with me. It's a Baptist mule, that's an amen. Now, notice the bit is loose, right? and it's hanging, bump, uh, hanging down below the mouth. I will still take, and now listen, if this mule was uncomfortable, guess what they'd be doing? Head would be up, mouth would be going. I gotta do something about this. We don't see this here, do we? It's all comfort, ready to go. All right, so now I loosen up the bit on the side here, one notch, and I let it drop. Left hand on the nose, right hand comes across the ear. I pull the right ear first to keep the head here. I don't want the head over there. I always want this left brain to be thinking of me. Now, what am I doing? I am the herd leader, plus I'm keeping my mule soft. This is as close to lateral flexion as you ever see, gonna see me have. Okay, that's pretty much it. I want the mule to be soft. Watch this. I let the mule take the bit out. You see that? I don't just rip it out and bump their mouth. I don't want to create bad habits. I let the mule take his time. He sees that in me, I'm being fair. I didn't just rip it out of his mouth. Do y'all see that? Where's the head? Still down here, still relaxed. The mule's just as relaxed when I started as when I begin, as when I ended. That's the way I want to keep it, okay? Now, when I do this, I then am the, hey, yes, you, you stick right here. I leave first, the mule can leave second. The mule's never to leave me. What if it does? If it does, I'm gonna hoot and holler and get after him. I've got, I've got people here, go ahead. Well, then he needs his, yeah, he, need, <laughs> he needs to get tired, okay? Now look, when you come into the corral, folks, you come into the corral, take your mule, Turn the mule, have the butt pointing that way. If you take it off here and the mule goes, oh boy, I'm gonna go roll and kicks out and you get a, 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 a thump on the back of the head or something like that, don't do that. Keep control of your animal. When I leave, this mule is supposed to stand there and wait. Now, did you notice? Made me look pretty good. I said, hey, where are you going? And that mule goes, just that little bit of changing my voice, the mule goes, oop, what, what do you wanna do? My wife taught me that. She does that to me all the time. <laughs> okay. So, what do you think? I have one question. Yes, sir. You'll go to put the 
Yeah, in the middle of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Yep. Throws his head up. Who's he look like? Bob Miller? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's quite a bit. <laughs> you know who Dr. Robert Miller is? Yes, I've heard of him. Yeah, he's... Well, I like him, yeah. You know, yeah. That's, I've heard that before now that you mentioned it. I kind yeah. of forgot about it. He's a very influential person. Yes, he is. Yes, and I'm is. not, so I... <laughs> <laughs> if you ever get a chance, you want to do some good reading and some good learning, Dr. Robert Miller, good stuff. He's a mule man as well, great guy. You know how old Bob is now? How what? How old Bob is now? What, 98 or something? Nope, he's 96. 96. Yeah, when I called him, I thought he was 86. But anyway, good friend of mine. He used to come over to Pierce College and, and, and be with us and train and stuff like this. Good, good guy, you know, great guy. And it's amazing. Even after his open heart surgery, he come home, first thing he did is went swimming. Yeah. He still comes to Mule Days every year. And yes. He does his talk about in, um, imprinting. Imprinting, yeah. Okay. Did you see how I let the mule put the bit out? When we rip the mule, when we, when we take it out and not, not be very cognizant of, of, their, of their nature and their quietness, then they tend to want to hurry up and pull it out, and they don't care if their teeth get bumped or not, hurry up and get it out. But I made it comfortable, okay? So I allowed them. I took it off nice and easy. I allowed them to drop their head. I allowed them to put the bit out. Does that make sense taking to you? That, taking it out isn't the problem. Putting it in isn't the problem. Okay. Uh, oh, that's when he throws his head. Okay, I'm going to use this finger right here. All right? Now I want you to watch this. I don't know why I always get people's attention when I do that. Come here, sweetheart. Okay, watch this finger. Go in this mouth right here in the corner. Now watch my right hand at the pole. Now I'm rubbing the bars of the mouth with that finger. This feels good. They love it. Now, when I go to put the bit in, when he opens his mouth, because this feels good right there, then I'll slide the bit in. Notice how, notice how I have the bridle ready. Okay. Have my hand between the ears. I get a hold of the, the crown. I take, a, I take my snaffle bit like this. There's my middle finger. I stick it up here. Notice the head is down. Don't bother putting the bridle on if the head is not down. Teach them to drop their head. Rub the bar, rub the bar, rub the bar, rub the bar. Easy, baby. Rub the bar. Notice I didn't get in any hurry. I just waited, kept rubbing the bars. Notice where the head is. This is what we want, okay? And then they pick it up and pack it. It's imperative they feel good about putting that bit in. I let her spit it out, okay? A lot of it's just patience. It, it, it's patience, that's right. Uh, that's, that's, that's why I ended up be becoming a trainer, because I was very impatient. The Lord knew what I needed, I reckon, you know. But, but you know, there's, I bought and had a lot of get, meals given to me because people made little mistakes. I had one meal given to me. They paid $12,000 for him as a yearling, to, as a two-year-old. $12,000 as a two-year-old. They give me that meal when he was 10. He had more bad habits than Biden, I mean, I mean than, than somebody. <laughs> Don't want to get too political here. Okay, does, does this make sense to you? Okay, now look, how do we get their head down? How do we do it? We do it like this. They care about their nose. My left hand on the nose, like this. My right hand up here on the pole. And I wait. This is uncomfortable for him her. There, she dropped her head, took my hands off, put my hands back on. So you won't even try to put the bit in until you get this? No, not until I get this. I want this first. Every time I feel the mule's head come away from my hands, I take my hands off and put it back on. Every time. No, none, because it's a fly. Even though my hands are heavier than a fly, this is uncomfortable. So as long as I take 
and and take my every time the mule drops his, his head and gets gets soft, I reward the softness by taking my hand off, putting it back on. See, so many mules are not nice, rainy mules because we're so stiff on them, we're so hard on them all the time. You know, I've taken some really nice mules that were that mean really hard mules and made them some pretty nice mules because I just took my time with them. They're worth it, you know. Okay, does that make sense to y'all? Okay, do you see how they pick up the bit and pack it? That's really important. Again, I want that before I'm going to climb in the saddle. I want that type of an attitude, the willingness, the packing up, picking up the bit and packing it. And then, <coughs> then when we see the mule in the uh, round pen with a surcingle with them on by themselves, then you'll see a whole different situation. Pretty nice. Okay, other questions? Anybody have any thought on that? Steve, while you're in there, would you critique her shoeing job? She was just shot a couple weeks ago. Oh, absolutely. You bet. Yeah, it's got shoes on good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Come on, Hitch. I'm sorry, baby. Come on, Hitch. Thank you. Okay, now, when I approach these animals, I try to approach them where I'm not looking aggressive. I don't have a whole bunch of rope that I have to mess with. Right now, I kind of got my back to the mule. And just kind of do this over here. And poke a hole in it here. And then I put it right here. And then when I go over, I approach my mule. I always squared shouldered. I kind of look, my left eye is looking at their head and the right eye is right here in the shoulder. And then I take my rope, throw it down on the ground, because there's a lot of half hitches there that you get yourself hung up on. And I go over the nose, over the right ear, over the left ear. And then I go around the nose, right to left. Come again, right to left. I take notice where the head is. I would not put this come along hitch on if the head wasn't down, if the nose wasn't tipped to the left. I would first make sure that was done first before I would put the come along hitch, halter or anything. And then once I do that, I kind of touch her nose here and bring her over this way, right ear, left ear, go from there. Now, when, when I'm looking at the feet, Let's see here, let's kind of start. I guess we can kind of start right over here. Everybody get to where you can kind of get a spot and then I'll come over that way, okay? Now, I want you to take your finger and run around the edge. I got an edge, I got an edge, edge leaves, no, no edge, no edge. Take your finger, no edge, no edge, no edge, no edge, no edge, no edge, all the way till I get to here. Plus, the toe is blunted off a little bit. Notice here, how the toe is squared off and not rounded off. See that, just that little bit makes a difference. So what they did was, then once they put the shoe on, the foot about always will come back. So you wanna have it a little bit more head, then you don't have to blunt off the toe. You never wanna blunt off the toe. Notice around the edge here, you don't see the shoe sticking out at all. Matter of fact, if you feel it, you can feel the outside wall. So now what I've done is I've taken, and I've taken the shoe and I've, and I've squ squeezed the, the hoof. That makes sense to you? So if the foot with the foot was out here, like see out here in the back? See how the back of this is sticking out right there? Okay, that's kind of, that's, that's a little bit radical. But, but uh, we want to see an edge all the way around there. You should be able to take your finger and go all the way around and feel that edge, and we don't. What we feel is the shoe. So the, the shoe is actually too tight. Now let me come over, let me come over this way now where everybody else can see it too. Come here, sweetheart. Now, let me show you, whoop, I found a rock there, didn't you? I think I missed your first comment this morning. This is come along hitch you're talking about? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, it is. There's the preparation. Now the foot is stable. Now I, he won't move so much. I touch the scapula right here, push the button, here comes the foot. 
and up the foot comes. This scapula right here, you can feel the point of it right here. You rub on that, that makes it uncomfortable as they pick their foot up. Now, notice how close the shoe is back here in the back. You see that? That is going to sure collect rocks. The other downside is I want you to look. The frog is real small and teeny. That's because the, the sides, the sides is, is uh, they're contracted in. Okay, so it should not be this small back here. Look how small the frog is. That frog should be this wide and it shouldn't be hard. It's as hard as a rock. Okay, that thing pumps blood up and down the leg, folks. That's what it does. Sure, can I ride with this? Yeah, I can ride with it. Would it do okay? Yeah. Uh, the shoe is tipped a little bit to the left. It's not centered. So, this is what I mean by that, okay? Here's my drawing. This is my frog, all right? This is my hoof right here. This frog should point straight toward the hoof, toward, toward the center. If this frog is pointing toward the center and I put my shoe on, I now have a balanced foot. But if this frog points here and all of a sudden the shoe is really kind of more over this way, then the shoe is off, it's off crooked. It's off probably a little bit more than a quarter inch right now, okay? But also notice how the back end's coming around, comes, cups under. Front end's pretty nice. Now, how do I fix that? How do I fix it? Remember, I want the back of the hoof to come out wider. So this is the back of the shoe right here. These are called branches. These are branches. Normally I want them flat. But now what I want to do is make my hoof roll come out. So what I do is I take my, my, my branches and I turn them like this. I turn them like this. Instead of flat, I turn them. Now when the foot comes out, comes down, what happens? It goes out here. How far up from the end of the, of the shoe to, do you have that, that tape, I'm calling it a taper, that angle? From the quarters back. So about the fourth nail, third and fourth nail back. I'll run my taper. Now this, if it's ever so light. When you look at it, you can barely see it there because it's going to take over a year to get it wider. Okay? It'll take over a year. Sometimes you have to cut the bars out. Okay, now what's the bars? Here we have the shoe. Right here we have a part of the hoof that's pretty tough. But it's also, it's also behind the quarter itself. And so that bar has shrunk. So I have to cut the bars out so it'll make the back of the foot go out. Okay? So my farrier, when he shoots the mules, he, put, he flares out the ends of the um, shoe. And he says it's because the bulbs of the heel need some place to land. Can you explain that? Okay. So what she's talking about here, let me get this foot. There's a position. There we go. I want you to look right here. Do you see how this cups in right here? Comes around and then cups in and comes back out. It really does it on the inside. But right here, it comes in and then comes back out again. So in other words, the foot looks like this. Here's the, here's the foot. It should look like that. Instead, it's curved like this. And so that really makes this part here weak. So he's taken, he's right, he's taken his shoe and he's designed it to the hoof wall, okay? Which this hoof wall, the shoe is actually too short for this particular meal because of the way the hoof wall goes like this. Right in here, right in this area, Right in here, that area, that's the quarters. That's where it's sunk in. That's where you can see, if you can get in here and look, you'd see the top half of the, of the hoof is wide, and as it goes down, it gets narrow. And if you can kind of, I don't know if you can kind of get a look at that or not, but you gotta really gotta be in a good spot. But fit, look at your foot, okay? It should be wide all the way down. If it's wide and comes in like this, contracted. Just a general rule of thumb. Does that make sense to you? All right now. Can you, can you recover that, that frog? You, just small, you said it was small and as hard as a rock. Is it still recoverable? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where, you again, you're going to use the pine tar linseed oil 
to be able to help get the softness in. And the other thing is uh, widening the shoe so that so that the foot comes out to the shoe and tape and, and take them and and uh, tip your your uh, branches like that. Okay. Now, let me bring me over here. Notice how I've got the rope on the ground. Not very many folks handle ropes much. So I try to get you to throw it on the ground so you don't get yourself hung up. If you know how to use a rope and move around, it's one thing. But otherwise, you got a lot of half hitches here. You could be in trouble in a real quick jam. So just let this thing go on the ground. You'll be fine. Now. Okay, so I've got my right rear foot ahead of my left rear foot. This is the this side here is the near side or the left side. That is the off side over there. Okay, so that foot now can support the weight when I pick up the foot. If this foot is back here, it's going to have a difficult time for me to pick up the back foot. So right now with the right rear foot being right there, it's the perfect place where she can pivot and, and stand on one foot. Okay. Now notice I've got my come along rope here with me right here. I take and put my hand on the hip, watch the foot. See it moving? Take and slide my hand down the, hook, the, hand, the leg. Got my left hand here on the hip, pushing it over. See it? See it moving over? Take my hand and I put it here, pick up on the foot. I bring it forward first, that uncocks the hip. She relaxed all the way to about right there and I'll wait. There she relaxed, I come back some more. Now I come straight back and I go over to the left. Notice I tried not to pull on the mule. Now, look how small this is back here. You get rocks hung up in there, plus that, Look, look, do you see how it's wide here and narrow here? Can you see that? So this is starting, whoa baby, this is starting to get contracted. This right here should actually curve out. I'll wait on you. I know this is painful, but it's your choice. She pulled on me, so now I'm putting some discomfort on her right here. There she relaxed. There she relaxed, I'll wait. I'll put some more discomfort on her right here on his foot. I'll put some more discomfort. There she relaxed. Go on. When they go to pull away from you, pull up on the hoof. That puts pressure right in here. They can't pull away from you or anything, but it makes them uncomfortable. Then they'll relax again. You just saw it. All right. Now, <coughs> the shoe is too far back. It's even where it needs to be here, but it actually needs to be a bigger shoe. So this is blunted off here. You can see, I don't know if you can see the, the foot right there and you can't feel it at all. I'm gonna call it the average shoeing job, okay? Now, oh baby, it's my fault. Let's go back and do that again. Okay, can everybody kind of see that? Feel this right here, Julie. Anybody else want to kind of feel it right here? Yeah. See, it's blended off. Mm -hmm. And it's solid. Whoa, baby. Okay, there's the pressure on the foot. I'll wait. I'll wait. Good. Now I put the foot down. If that mule ever pulls away from you, take that leg and just bend it like that, and that mule will want to stand right there. It's just like it paralyzes them. Okay. Any, any, any thoughts or ideas? Basically, it's an average shoeing job. Yeah, she's got a good video to show us right here. So, well, yeah. yeah. I, 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 hey, Joe, average. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what am I gonna? What am I gonna? How am I gonna tactfully tell my shoer how to do his job? <sighs> you know how they are. Oh, I know how they are. Yeah, but I've also had a lot of shoers. Thank you for telling folks that they'll have an understanding. Uh, I, I guess the best thing to do is say, look, this is a mule. And their foot is a donkey, which they basically should know. And then what you've got to do is you've got to shoe wider, not tighter. So right now he's shoeing tight. So goes the rest of the foot. Now it wasn't just him because she didn't get this just overnight. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's other shoes beforehand. So he's having to work with what everybody else did. Now, 
if it's this wide at the top, it should be this wide at the bottom. But if it's this wide at the top and this wide at the bottom, we got contracted heels, mm -hmm. which we have. You can see this, the, the shoes aren't that far apart. What he told me was he had to, he had to buy mule shoes. He didn't make these. Well, he had regular shoes with him, and he said they do make shoes that are already kind of shaped like a mule shoe. Yeah. And he went and got those. Now, he has shod mules in the past at a pack outfit. Yeah, shoes. yeah. But he d she has a little bit of an issue with hot shoeing. Yeah. She apparently, and I saw this when there was another shoer there using a the forge. Yeah. That sizzle and smoke yeah. thing freaks her out. Yeah. So I told him that he'd need to cold shoe. Yeah. Yeah, so just, I don't know if that makes it harder for him to try to use what he has and just... You know, cold shoeing's been around for years and it's good, folks. You know, hot shoeing's fine for those guys that know what to do, uh -huh. but it don't it don't make your, your shoeing any better. Okay, so he can't, like, make the shoe... No, nah. it makes it easier him for pounding hot metal compared to cold metal. Oh, and okay. he's right about the mule shoes. There is a general shape of mule shoes. Yeah. And I actually bought some, like, seven years ago. And they're still mostly in the box. As a matter of fact, I took them down to Randy, down to the ranch, you know, and uh, and they're and they're okay, okay. But you can still take a Saint Croix, Ot, Double Ot, whatever, and shape it within minutes, you know. Okay. You don't need a special shoe. You can shoe them. Now, here's the other thing you want to think about: is that the sole underneath it there, you know, has has uh, uh, all kinds of nerves and blood veins and things like this, okay. If that shoe, give it to me here, prepare yourself, little girl, get that right front foot back, pick this one up, there you go, okay, <laughs> if this shoe, and it's not, if this shoe, when you pick up your foot, and you see the shoe setting against the sole, you got a good chance of, of buggering that sole and having a having a, a, a uh, um, abscess on the foot. So when a, when a farrier is shaping a shoe, he's going to take the inside of it and bevel it all the way around so that there's no pressure on that sole at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'd only put four. And see, now the nice thing about this is now here's the quarters right here. Yeah. So here's the quarters here. There's no nail there. That's great. But I want more expansion now on a mule that's just contracted. And this is a bad contraction now. Don't get me wrong. I've seen, and we still may see it here. I've seen a lot worse contraction. But still understand that frog pumps blood up and down the leg. If you don't have a healthy frog, you're not going to have a healthy leg. There's nothing wrong with doing some trimming, but understand frogs. Frogs do shed. They do shed, so they naturally do it. Unless you have to do what's called cutting the canals. And what that amounts to is, uh, back where the frog comes together, here and here, on each side, there should be a place opened up. You have to take your, your knife and, and open it up so that rocks and whatever will go right out the back end if things start getting packed up. So I will cut the canal but I hardly ever taught you frog. Hardly ever. Okay. Lots of questions there. Hit them all. <laughs>